gentlemen, Kinguin Pro League 2015, week 8, day 1. This is going to be the first of two days this week. With me, Lothar, who is back from uh, being busy, I guess, in the Hearthstone scene. Yeah, he's yeah. on and off. He's, all, he's supposed to be always here, but there's a lot going on these days. Uh, so he ends up traveling quite a bit. Yeah, that's true, but I'm happy I'm back and yep. looking forward to the next week. That's week 8, right? Yeah, we're nearing the end, which is really where stuff starts to matter because every little win that you can eke out is going to matter a lot for you to get into the playoffs. Some players have a really negative score to the point where I think oh, even yeah. if they won 100%, uh, it wouldn't matter. They wouldn't be able to get reinvited. So before I move on to the rankings and the matches we have today, I want to reiterate a bit uh, why these matches matter. The format of the tournament is a round robin format. We have 10 players. Uh, 20 players separated in two groups of 10 and each player in each group is going to play once versus each other player in their group which means that in effect uh, each player is supposed to theoretically play nine matches total during the league one per week and we're on week eight which means we're nearing the very end next week is the last pre-playoffs week and then we're going to be uh, going on to the playoffs with the semi-finals grand finals the first three players of each group get to qualify to the playoffs so two spots are going to go to the quarterfinals one of the you know the top player in each group is going to go directly to the semi-finals and the fourth and fifth place in each group will be re-invited for season two of kpl which should be taking place about two to three months i believe after the ending of the first one uh, but that means each group will have an open you know five open spots with which an is open insane. qualifier uh, for people to get into for season two yeah, well, that's a crazy amount of people. Uh, when you think about a tournament league like that, uh, making a big splash into the open community is just like the important of uh, importance of that is really insane. Ten players from the open qualifier, which will be broadcasted for nine weeks, each week with one uh, one game. This is a huge amount of. You know, broadcast time that you will get. So if if a new player will get to uh, this league, this this means a huge, huge involvement in the pro scene for him. Yeah, I mean the exposure is basically massive. Like any player who gets to qualify is going to get a huge amount of exposure. And what's cool is initially the league was supposed to open only three slots per group, and then that was changed to five slots. So in effect, in season two, we could have upwards of half the field that's going to be fresh, you know, Hearthstone blood. Uh, in yeah. effect, without all the same names that you're used to seeing in invitationals, perhaps, uh, which is how the KPL initially started off. You know, we we had we needed a you know uh, a roster of players which were invited. And then for season two, that's going to be rotated out as uh, as people qualify through the the qualifier that's going to take place before the second season. I'm sure that some of the open qualifiers players will be the same that are right now in the league. Like, yeah, no way that, that those guys will not be trying to get again uh, to be again uh, in the league, and some of them will succeed for sure. Yeah, for, for instance, you know, we have uh, Amaz and Frezar right now, I think, with the two tied for the, the worst scores, which means, in effect, that even if they do win their next two matches, they are unlikely to get to, to reach uh, well, you know, they Season 2 of APL, ahead. I think. Right? Sorry, sorry, what? They have three matches ahead, I think. They, they have, well, I mean, I think Frezar has only two because Masson dropped out of the Oh, yeah, one. right. But That's Amaz right. does have three more matches to play, but even if he goes... To, for three wins, he's still going to not make it a top five at the moment because a lot of players um, have four wins already, right? So even yeah, if he true. does win his next matches, at best he could equalize for perhaps sixth place, but he's not going to be able to come back. And Orange is in a similar position, but not exactly the same. But what's going to happen is they probably will go through the open qualifier, as you said, and get back in for season two because of the amount of, you know, the, the prize pool is fairly substantial and the exposure is great. It's a constant, you know, flow of two months long recurrent tournament format exposure. It's definitely something they want to look forward to. Yeah, and we hope we'll get um, world championship points for the next edition, right? Yeah, because BlizzCon essentially requires, I think, is it is that a requirement for have uh, to have like 50 player, 50% yes, of the exactly. players yeah. uh, as That's open change, pool? I would say. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the reason why that, that the whole thing was changed. And then if that, those give BlizzCon points, then in effect, there's even more of a reason to try to qualify, um, yep. which should be kind of interesting. So today, the matches are, you know, we have five matches at the moment. We have Frezar versus Gara as the first match. We have Orange versus Reynad, Strife Crow versus Thice, RDU versus Amaz, and Trump versus Dog. 
Uh, at the moment, I think uh, Frezar and Amaz are the two players who are struggling the most. And I don't know like how much... I mean, they want to win, if only to... Uh, you know, for the experience or to deny their opponents the victories that they might be seeking uh, in the case of perhaps team rivalries. But, like, they still have to do the best they can, if only for the exposure factor. I would say it's a matter of honor now. You don't want yeah. to be, like, the last one in the group of first season of King and Pro League, right? Yeah, you, you do your best to at least not end there. But, I mean, somebody's got to end at the very end, right? Somebody has yep. to be at the bottom of the group. The, the groups are stacked with talented players, which means as a result, you'll end up with potentially strong players having very, you know, uh, inconsistent results. And we're going to look at Orange as a great example of that. Um, he's won two big tournaments so far, but he's not doing so well in the KPL. Maybe it's also the fact that uh, King and Pro League is basically about reading your opponents. You have right. this schedule for each week, you can adjust your decks to that. So it gives a, a measure of other skill um, skill capabilities of the players, right? You can prepare for, uh, you can scout, you can prepare for um, specific decks for specific classes and try to counter your specific opponent. Yeah, the Conquest format really lends itself super well to, you know, lineup reading, and it's a bit of a mind games uh, event, like, in the case of mind games, whatever format you're picking, it's all about figuring out what your opponent is going to play to bring something that counters him, and that's especially true in Conquest, since they have to win with every deck, so if you target one deck that you know they always bring, then you have a really good chance and just, you know, you could go 0-2 and then 3-2 if yeah, your lineup exactly. is super stacked against one of their decks. I think it's uh, King Green Pro League is a great, great um, exercise also uh, to train this, those capabilities because that those will be uh, those those abilities those will be important. An example during Dreamhack uh, Dreamhack Bucharest, which will be happening next week, because players can yeah. change your, uh, their decks each um, round. So it's basically the same as in our league. Yeah, by changing each round effectively, it, it forces a reread of the the player. Um, uh, you know, as you go along, you need to to reevaluate what you think is going to be worth bringing based on what you've seen before. Some players in the league have been exploitable in what they bring, uh, but I have to say I've been pretty impressed by the players' abilities to shuffle their game. And that's especially interesting because we have Blackrock Mountain coming out mm -hmm. as the league is ongoing, so we end up seeing new cards. I wonder if we'll see any Dragon Consorts. Uh, it's a card that hasn't really received as much attention as a lot of us expected it to uh, initially, at least. I, I expected to see a bit more of it than I well, did. I would like to see more Dragon Consorts, but I think we'll ha still have to wait one more week, you know? Yeah. To all the for all the dragons to be released yeah, and all exactly. the entire synergy to really, you know, it, just hungry dragon alone is a big deal, right? Just that one card is and Chromagus as well in next wing, you know which what? makes consort uh, also pretty hungry valuable. Hungry dragon, I'm not sure how to evaluate that card yet. Okay, uh, it, I think it requires a lot of testing. Uh, but the volcanic drake, this is something I'm really interested in. Yeah, you know, that that's a card. Well, we all said that the um, Lumberer for Druid is unplayable, right? Because I liked basic. it, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people didn't like it, and I can understand why. I was ambivalent about its value. I think we've seen it in one deck or two no. so far. <laughs> but now we have seen Tides winning with Mill Druid, yeah. and it has two copies of the Lumberer. So it's kind of like, okay, that fits the, that, that type of deck, and it's really powerful in that. So... People just have to play test and try different things, and uh, Blackrock Mountain will definitely shuffle the meta game a lot. Yeah, like if Volcanic Lumber is good, then how sick is Volcanic Drake? You know, yeah. three less mana, uh, easier to enable by default, and it's got a pretty okay stat line uh, for what it does. So, and it enables all the dragon synergies that come with it. So, picture that. That's got to be a pretty crazy thing. So, maybe when Volcanic Drake comes out with a synergy with hero powers for Pally or Muster for battle, perhaps we'll see even more dragons come up. But for now, Dragon Consort hasn't really been seen around. Uh, unfortunately, but hopefully we'll see a bit of it today. Now we have the the lineups for the first two players: Frezar versus Gara. Frezar has brought Druid, Rogue, and Warlock to Gara's Priest, Hunter, and Mage. No Shaman for Gara this week. Yeah, and that's really good. That's something that we were talking about, right? Hyped was easily 
uh, exploited by the um, by his rogue, right? He brought yeah. rogue every single week, and we saw that he changed that later during his league, uh, d during the league because he was getting kicked by every single player that just brought the counters to rogue, and now he's dropping that. And I and Garo, I think does the same. He's um, he's a player that I would say is um, changing the shaman between priest, so it's like a moving spot for him. And both are kind of different, uh, have different matchups. So I would say it's a great, uh, great, uh, great pick to sometimes use priest, sometimes use shaman, sometimes drop it like completely. Entirely, yeah. Like yeah. you have to have a flex spot, I think, in your lineup. Uh, it's kind of like deck building, right? You have the deck building, you have the lineup building. You need to have some flex spots where you can swap in and out a specific card, and in this case, a specific deck, and I think Gara yep. has to be swapping out a Shaman once in a while, and you know, Hyped, you said, you know, didn't really bring Rogue at some point because he got exploited, but he's been bringing all sorts of Rogues, ranging from the Wolf Rider, like <laughs> hyper-aggressive Rogue, to yeah. the Mill Rogue, like, just about everything, Temple Rogue, or Tinker, Sharp Sword, Baseline, or the more Miracle-centric one as well, he's been doing a lot of experimentation, and he's a great Rogue player, which makes... Which makes the whole thing even nicer to watch. Yeah, that's true. Um, hyped is an, I think, a person personification of Rogue. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> if anyone is, it's probably him. Uh, I mean, Dog plays a lot of Rogue, but I mean, hyped is something else. He's been playing it since you know he's gotten into Hearthstone more so than I think anyone else in the scene at this point. All right. Uh, also, before we move on to the matches, I want to remind you, or not remind you, but tell you that uh, instead of having the matches for the second day of the week happen on Thursday, Thursday is being moved to Wednesday, right? All the matches that should be occurring two days from now will be occurring tomorrow. That is Show versus Zixo, Caldi versus Hyped, Life Coach versus Amaz, Kibler versus Firebat, and again, Life Coach's second match versus Orange. Those are all going to be taking place tomorrow, so it's going to be a back to back. Uh, a back-to-back -back week for King Win Pro League, which makes it so basically more action is packed over a smaller amount of time. Sorry guys for the change, I know you, you're accustomed to the, you know, usual Tuesday, Thursday, but um, yeah. this is the last two weeks and I, I think BRM kind of messed it up, right? Because there are always issues on Thursdays, like always, always. issues. Yep. So to prevent that during the last two weeks of BRM, we just switched it to, to Wednesday. Yeah, B BRM coming out on Thursday really causes, I mean, on on Blizzard's side of things, it also, it causes issues. Um, and it's easier to have, you know, the tournament happen on Wednesday before the next win comes up. So that when Thursday comes around, there's also another disappointment of not seeing the new cars. You know, if it came out on Thursday uh, and you didn't see the cars that come out on that specific Thursday because of Blizzard's release line, it kind of sucks. Because you turn into a yeah. tournament, you hope to see the new cars, you hope to see Crow Magus, you hope to see Volcanic Drake, and it's not there. <laughs> Um, so you have to wait one more week for that. So Wednesday is going to be the day, and then for the for the last two weeks of the event, and then for the playoffs as well, we'll have a, a specific schedule for that. Also, King Gwyn is still looking for casters. I'd like to point out, in case you want to get into casting, uh, send your VODs with yourself talking over them over the games at esports at kingwin.net. You have a chance to get yourself uh, a cast off in the studios. There'll be info around the stream if you want to get uh, more information about that on the website as well. Something to look into if you're getting into casting. True. And you also can use the KPL code to buy games on Kingwin. You have like an 8% discount if I'm not mistaken. Buy the games, you know. Damn you games, the, man. Games, it, yeah. Yeah, the games. cool. I bought yeah. Hotline Miami lately. Oh. And Final Fantasy 4. Uh, I don't, 7, I'm, sorry. I don't have time to play games. I have. No I, time I just for buy games. them and you know hoard them. That's what I do. My Steam yeah. list is full. I have like 300 games, and so many games I have like 15 minutes play style on it, uh, play time that is. So we have like, <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. I just I, I don't know. I'm a compulsive game buyer, I guess, but no time, no time for games. Sylvanas mode enabled. Yeah, no time for games. I bought yeah. the Prison Architect on Kingwin. Played. Played it like for 15 minutes. Really, I was really hooked into like, it, right? But yeah, then it's you really have no great. time. But then I was like, God damn, I don't have 10,000 hours to play this game. Okay, I'll default. But I, I was still uh, like happy with the with the buy. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It, it's just, uh, it's tricks. It's tricking you into purchasing it. But I mean, it's not the case for everyone. A lot of you out there have the time to play games. So, I mean, take advantage <laughs> of that, honestly. My plan it's... is to like take vacation. Go and then play all and the take, games. And, and take the laptop with me and I'll be like, okay, now I can play the games. All the games yeah. are mine. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry, baby. I'm going off for, you know, a really important work-related thing. Um, I have to go, and then you just spend one week no-lifing all the Steam games, <laughs> and you come back with, a, like, a huge Admir beard, uh, like you've been lost. Yeah. All right, so what I'm curious about, though, is whether or not Frezar is about to show up, because we're waiting on him. There's Gara, and Frezar should be playing the first match. Gara is live on the webcam. Uh, instead of a the picture, webcam. we're actually going to get a live feed. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of it, This is like, like a, the webcam quality of Gara is looking like a new MacBook. Really, yeah. like this new, this year's release Very MacBook. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit though about Gara's position in the league right now because he's, mm -hmm. you know, even on uh, wins and losses at 3-3, tied with, well, he's got a better tiebreaker score than some other players, but Thais, oh, basically yeah, Thais show Gara, Zixo, and Brian Kibler have the same score. But mm -hmm. Gara yeah. has a slightly worse tiebreaker than Sho and Thais, which means winning against Frezar is important, but ultimately Sho and Thais, if they do win their next match as well, will still stay ahead of him. He's in the top five, but Thais and Sho are tied for fourth place with the exact same score. So we're gonna have to see exactly what ends up happening there. This is gonna be a point of contention for Gara's ability to get reinvited in KPL season two. Mm -hmm. Is Tyson uh Thais is playing today? Right, I guess Drive Crow. Wow. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a really tough match. Strife Crow's at the top of his group here in the Alliance group. I think Savic played one more match than Strife Crow. So if Strife Crow loses, Savic is actually going to be a second place still. And uh, Savic had a, such a hard time in this league at the start. Yeah, 0 3, I think, or something along those lines. Or 0 2, 1 2, 1 3. Yeah, anyway, it was a yeah, really horrible start. Really, it just really started off really badly. Really tough. Really tough, but he managed to squeeze those wins lately. So good for him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as, uh, as it's really also interesting uh, that when you analyze the games, right, you can see that most of the players have the tiebreakers like really tight. You know, five, yeah, they are. zero, yeah. Strife Crow plus three, Savish plus one. Wait, right? if Thais beats Strife Crow, he's going to end up at first place, right? He's going to go up to four, three with a tiebreaker that's going to mm. be better than Strife Crow's or equal and, to it. The Strife Crow would go to and four. And better three. than Savish. Yeah, yeah. Thais will be first if he wins today. Yeah, that's a big deal. This is going to be a really important match today for Thais. We're nearing the end of the first season, so he wants to get those you know, those wins at the very end of the season to get into the playoffs directly. Yeah, he's but <laughs> he's a good candidate to get reinvited at the very least. True, but look at the group horde. We have live coach plus ten. Yeah, plus ten, plus ten tiebreaker. <laughs> you know, live coach is their second place. He's played only five matches. I'd like and to point out. And he has plus ten yeah. in five yeah. matches. He wow. needs to play four more matches total, which like, you know, two of them are going to be taking place tomorrow uh, and probably two more the following week to catch up on the schedule. But, I mean, he's got a really good chance at finishing first, second, or third of his group at this point. Yep. All right, so Frezar has shown up, and in fact, we know the decks the players are going to be bringing for the first round. Frezar is going to be playing Rogue versus Garus Priest. I'm curious to see what Garus Priest is. You know, we talk about his tendency to innovate or you know, twist archetypes to his own liking. Maybe it's an aggro priest with, um... I believe. What's the I new, believe. new card? Shadow what Bomber the... or no, Resurrect? No, no, no. Resurrect. I yes. Shadow Bombers and Resurrect with Lear Jenkins, Wolf Riders, Arcan Golems, and Leper Gnomes, and, um... And what that's else? My, that's my favorite deck. I, I know I don't say it very often, but this is the probable... The archetype I probably worked the most on, like aggro priest. But it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> That's the issue. Is like I spent so many hours testing and making and refining that type of deck. But uh, it feels like you're better off going for Tempo Priest than an Aggro Priest with Wolf Riders. Even with Resurrect, like I thought that would me that would make the deck viable suddenly because you could bring back an Arcing Golem uh, or some such thing. Because if you think about it, they've got Mind Blast, they've got Shadow Bombers. Those are broken tools. Like, give give Shadow Bomber to Hunter, and I swear to God, we will never see anything else in any tournament setting. Like, you sure. couldn't give Shadow Bomber a Mind Blast to an aggressive class like Hunter. You would break the game. Yeah, that would be awful. But we'll still have to see, because um, Blizzard is kind of pushing war um, Priest to a um, more aggro yeah. kind of orientated deck, right? But we still lack something. I would say... Two drop. <laughs> I would like to say it's the hero power that is yeah. lacking because that's right. the problem, right? When you play Hunter, you hero power is the most important thing because other classes can play really similar decks and it's always about the hero power. 
and um, well, Priest is just awful at being aggressive with his hero power because how you can all, you can play Shadow Form and then use it as a you know hunter of hero power, but that costs three points, uh, three mana more, which is kind of you know yeah. awful. G give me a four mana weapon. The way it comes into play, it gives me a Shadow Form in my hand that costs zero. I won't. There you go, right? A wand for Priest, you would say. Yeah, a wand or, or a spell book, whatever. Pick pick your choice, but give me something. I really I hope something. they will introduce wands in the next expansion. Yep. All right. So getting into the game here, Gar's got an Isera. Shall we see dragons, Twilight Whelps, and other such shenanigans? I would say Fraser is being uh, is in a great position when he picked the rogue against Priest. Yeah, I think that's a really but good matchup. The Priest Twilight Drake is really important here. I, I mean, think there's a bit of a glitch here on Frezar's side of things. Like there's lacking one card? No, oh, there's it? a mana count that hasn't gone up, I believe. It's still stuck really? at one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting turns of events. Spectre so, user bugs. Gaara went for the Injured Blade Master Circle. I mean, that's pretty weak to sap, but it's still pretty okay. Generally speaking, it's you know, the rogue has to expend quite a lot of effort to get rid of the uh, the... Injured Blade Master as it is. Although that's a perfect line of play here with Deadly Poison and the SI and the board glitch. I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, what's happening? Like, that's <laughs> a really small card. <laughs> <laughs> it's been compressed. It's I been think compressed. they have to reconnect with the Fraser account. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Well, what happened to the, to the troll, man? Every, everything just broke. All right. Wait, Agent, Deadly Poison, right? Agent that's Deadly Poison six. and Backstab. He, oh, everything no, okay. that, that's up. exactly 7, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit overkill. Well, it's exactly you know, the 7 damage um, to kill the Injured Blade Master. A lot of cards, the but they're very efficient. Yeah, look at that production value. There's, when there's no, no hand of the other player, there's like cards. Wow, that's nice. It's the first time I see in any kind of tournament league or whatever. Yeah, usually you see the loading screen of Hearthstone. Yeah, or Windows. <laughs> Oh yeah, good old Windows 8 Aero team. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Belcher seems like a good counter to those free attack minions. Uh, I mean, free HP minions. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, that's a good. He's got a four five here to deal with the agent. That one cannot get backstab, and nice Frezar too. can get a pretty good. Although he does get a good blade flurry though. Yeah, well, like an insane one. I would yeah. say. Yeah, actually, wait with that Edwin Van Cleave that curves in perfectly. Yeah. That's wow. But whoa, do you that's want be to? Tough. I would say I would rather play him as four four, especially when you just squeeze, uh, squeeze him in a, in a on an empty board, and you saw one circle, so you know there's little chances of organized oh, second circle to clear yeah, that. And, that uh, Frezar agrees with you fully. He goes for the four four Edwin six six. You know, for those of you who may be wondering why that line of play was taken, is because Shadow or Death is a problem against Edwin. Uh, mm -hmm. When it does become a 6-6, six, six, but now the priest has very few answers. Well, oh, I would say is Sylvanas one. is kind of a good answer, you know? Yeah. There's no sap. Like, if there would be a sap, oh, then you just lose. Because you you spend your turn 6 on nothing. I guess Frezar is just forcing his opponent to like to, to play defensively, because Gara can't actually sacrifice that Sylvanas. Wouldn't you play just the other Drake? I don't... Well, maybe you could... Honestly, it wouldn't work. Like, I don't see a point. Oh, oh nice that's, play from Gara nice. here. That's nice. Amazing yeah. play from Gara, reducing the health of his Sylvanas down to two, increasing the one of Vol'jin, and then getting himself a Shredder that he then can get an extra minion out of. That's really well played by Gara. I didn't he's even see still, that. He's still not out of the problems that Rogue is creating because he now has a sap. Uh, I mean, a sprint, which is great. Because he wants to get a really great, great blade flurry, and he can, he can basically say, "You can punch ten damage in my face. I will still wait one turn, and then blade flurry everything away and deal with that." Yeah, that's, that's a it. really good way to take the worries away. Honestly, like it's not as though Frezar is in a bad spot as far as health goes. Like he's very safe at twenty-six. Mm -hmm. He's about to take quite a bit of possible snowballing damage, but yeah, but doesn't, that being, doesn't matter. That doesn't matter because he will draw a Farseer or two, or maybe mm -hmm. just an anti cubot if he plays that. But I would rather say, well, wait, Gara is known for face hunter, so maybe he has actually an anti cubot uh, in his deck. 
That's possible if it's an anti aggro built priest. Well, there goes an Earthen Ring here for Frezar. That prep is going to be very important for him to get a really cheap Tinkers and to Blade Flurry follow up. That is, in fact, probably what he's going to want to do very soon. But Gara's getting a really big board playing into the second Flurry. He's seen one, so he's probably not too yeah. afraid of the second one, but that's he a perfect board that. clear here for Frezar. Oh, wow. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, he will use the the, the, the Tinkers now. Yeah, he has but to prep Tinkers still... Blade Flurry, right? There will be a minion from the Shadow. Yeah, shed. exactly. But is that, the... can, can you really not do it? You have to do it. Yeah. I think you have to do it. It's a pity that the second Belcher went down. Because yeah, if there would be no Belcher, he would attack into the... Well, if he would be worrying about the drop, like he would have just went face. Wait, I, I didn't think about that, but the death rattle of the Shredder will trigger before the Dark Cultist, so the the, the minion will spawn first. Oh right? yeah, that's and right. And this will buff the minion that comes out of the Shredder. And then there will be a slime from the Belcher, right? No, he will kill that. No, no, never mind. Well, uh, well about. thought here by Frezar, realizing that if he buffs the Drake, that's a Shadow Word deathable target. So he preps first and then goes for the Blade Flurry. Wait, he didn't attack? What? I... I yeah, I guess it wouldn't have killed it because it was on five health. Oh yeah, right. Never mind. You can't kill it with it. Oh, balance chosen. Well, that's convenient. Well, the tr the no stupid Trogzo is also a great card here. I I can't <laughs> I can't believe it, but yes, it is. Um, that two three gets buffed whenever the opponent plays a spell, and if anybody plays spells, it's probably a rogue player. And I'll be damned if I'm looking at an SI seven agent here. That is pretty sweet. Although I guess he's got to heal himself before uh, things go wrong for him. Why? He saw two blade flurries, so he the only thing he is worried about is double eviscerate. I would uh, say Prezar he's finds double farce here. I would Lothar say he's farce here? way way ahead when it comes to health points. Now he can just heal his minions, go for board control. He saw both clears, so the minions were are most important. Yeah, contesting the board is probably the most relevant thing at this point. I mean, that 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 trog is really impactful. It's just a little unfortunate for Gara that he's got to contest a really tough board. Well, that's not exactly what he wants to do, but hmm. Do you? I mean, an SI seven will probably come down, is my guess. So you want to draw also? Yeah, with the uh, Northshire possibly. Well, there's no fire. Heal the Trogzo and um, see what the, what you draw. I, I can't really know what ha, what he has yeah, in his that's deck. Yeah, so right? Can't really predict what do you want to do because you will have seven mana, right? Ah, he's gonna go for the Blood Mage Thanos ping trade play. That's um. That's okay, not what I expected. Better, to be but, um, I think it's fine because it stops the Lotha, but. I think he's trying to reach for lethal as soon as possible. Yeah, that's. I think that's that's very good, very good approach. Uh oh. Could that have changed things? So eight. eight. Sap. Oh that's my nine. god, it's that's so nine. close. That's ten, twelve. One off. That's one of lethal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Forsen syndrome has just hit Frezar straight in the face. Well. Hmm. Oh, wow, Frezar. It's got to feel a bit sad. I guess... Sap... You could start trading with Lothab if you felt like it, but... It's so weak. I would say you have to... Sap the Trogzor. Wow. <laughs> He's gonna sprint, try to extend the longevity of this game, or the length why, of it, Why rather. wouldn't you sprint first? Nah, you have but to... He's not sprinting, then. He's gonna trade with the Akanai to remove any type of uh, massive board swing that Gara I, could get. I would say he will keep the Eviscerate for the next turn. Yeah, there's no way he can... Well, I mean, what are you gonna use it on? Oh, he <laughs> gave his opponent a card! Yeah, he gave his opponent a card. If he would heal his face, he wouldn't have done that. Oh, and when the Gara Death, finds the Shadow of Death. Look, look at that. If there wouldn't be a draw, there wouldn't be a Shadow of Death for that. Yeah. What came first? The Shadow of Death or the draw? I think in this case, 
It was the draw. Oh man, that draw was so important for Gara. Yeah. Getting that Shadow Word Death is gonna remove the biggest damage output that Frezar's got on this board. And between the SI7 and Shadow Word Death, that's essentially perfect for Gara. That's a perfect turn. Saturated a 10 mana with a Trog, that's just flawless. True. Hmm, I'm not too sure about that. I wonder what he's got in mind. I guess. Hmm. Why would okay. you play? Why would you sacrifice? I thought he was gonna play Shadow or Death SI, but he decided against it for some. No, he's playing that. Okay, sorry. Right. I'm kind of confused now. Yeah, me too. I, I I wonder what Garo was fishing for because he had a really straightforward play that was amazing, but this is just as good. This is just as good. I just thought he would choose to develop the Trog, but he opted yeah. for the card draw. I'm not sure why would you play the, um, the Pyromancer is weaker than the Trogzor. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe there was a. I think maybe for the heal, for the card draw on the Northshire, Frezar is gonna have to find another fan of knives to make this work. If he does, he even plays another one. We've seen two blade flurries, so I really doubt he plays two, but it's possible. Oh, there's a sap. Not even relevant in the slightest. So, Blood Mage prep Fan of Knives? Yeah, it seems okay. Trogster wouldn't die to that. <laughs> well, you'd, you'd have you have to trade your uh, your dagger away anyway, right? As the Wait, is that even the name of the card? Oh, I'm mistaken. What's no, it's name? Stone Splinter Trog. Yeah, it's not Trogzor. Yeah, yeah. Trog. <laughs> Every Trog is Trogzor. Yeah, it's like, you see those <laughs> cards so often. Kappa. Yeah, it's like Trump, Monk, and Amaz. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I You know what? Oh, I make that mistake every time no, I cast just, for King Glaze. Have you noticed that? Like, every time I, I cast with Monk, I like, every single time like, I'm talking I about the... Yeah, like, it's, <laughs> I always make the mistake. Like, I look at the lineup, and we have, like, Trump versus Amaz and something, and then I just get confused with everyone. Uh... Yeah, I, I get accused of racism, obviously. You're racist, that's it. Yeah, obviously. You know me. Alright, so Gara's got a pretty decent board, and Frezar is going to be hard-pressed to counter it, unless he plays a Vanish. Uh, it's going to be... Oh, oh, wait, wait oh. no. Whoa, that, that helps a lot. Yeah. That helps a whole lot. Uh, Actually, what, Frezar what may be able to do this. Whoa! That is wait, crazy. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. You got three, seven, nine. No, I don't think the the vile teacher will live. Unfortunately, he needed the second eviscerate. Yeah, and he that. needed he needs it maybe for next turn at the very least. But he has nine HP. What if what so, if he like daggers up, saps and then tinkers for his dagger, his face for eight. What for about four? vile teacher sap agent pyromancer? Yeah, so they're your one ones live unless he's got a nova, or he could just steal one of them with a kebab, but that's usually okay. No, yeah, I, I think that's probably mm, a decent play. Maybe even Sap first. Sap first, Violet Teacher, Agent, D3-2. So you don't give him the 1-1? One, one? Yeah. Well, you can get... No, no, no. You play the Sap up to Violet Teacher because then he has to use 6 mana on a creature that he doesn't want to play. Right. Because he's being threatened by Rogue too. By right? Rogue, yeah, definitely there's... Yeah. Well, Trogzor is getting buffed here by the sap. Trog, no, stupid. Not stupid, but if it like, I, I'm actually surprised at the efficiency of that Trogzor in this matchup. It's been Trogzor. working pretty well for him. He can get Eviscerate from that. I would say... Yeah, or Deadly. Just fought still, right? Did he see two Deadlies yet? Two Deadlies, two Deadlies. Yeah. And he saw one Tinkers. Yeah, so, so you go for thought steal and maybe... it might be decent. Mm -hmm. You might get prep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your in your head, like there's no prep though. But we've seen both. But um, I think thought steal is still a really good play. Emperor, yep, that's not what he wants to see. I think there's a good argument here to trade, right? Mm hmm. Like you trade with everything you've got, like the three three. Oh, he doesn't want I to would steal say it. So. I thought he was gonna opt for the steal, but we'll see the draw first. Oh, light bomb! 
Wow. Wait. Wait. Okay, that's gonna clear the board. That is. Pretty that's a shame. It, it's Isn't not it? affected by the spell power. Like that's yeah. a huge shame. Oh, what? Dragon Egg. What? <laughs> you know what? The only player I've seen playing Dragon Egg recently was Zedalot. Okay. No, <laughs> not not even Kibler. <laughs> not even Kibler plays Dragon Egg. Just Zed a lot. That's the only guy I've seen. Wow, I'm actually interested because so it works super well nice. against aggro with knife juggler and wild pyro. Because every aggro deck nowadays plays jugglers. Oh man, what a sick turn for Frezar though. Shadow War deaths have been seen. Oh man, that's eight damage. Yeah, that, that could be a rip. Yeah, it can be. And it yeah, is. it can definitely be. Well, that's rest and pepperonis. Even if he heals up, he's still dead to the board. Yep. Yeah. Well, you don't want to show anything at the very least, because if you do, then your opponent gets information. And Frezar will have to win against this priest again, because Gara still hasn't added locked out. But Frezar's rogue is now taken out of his lineup, which I leaves him with Druid and Warlock. He's not playing aggressive decks, I would say. Wait, there's a Warlock. Ooh. Yeah. Who knows what's going on there? Zoo is back! Board. Yeah, From you can dead. get your tickets right now. Go to the zoo. We're See going to the fan. zoo. 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 I'm waiting for you. 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 I don't know what the song is. Trump made it a while back and he nailed it, but I, I can't get the rhythm in my head. I um, wouldn't even try if I would like. If I were you. You. Yeah. You. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go to the zoo. zoo oh, man. Zoo. Fraser Studio Apartment. Pew. Oh god. Alright, so Gara's gonna be sticking to his priest here, oh and Frezar's gonna go for his druid. So, I think druid is still one of the best decks. We've seen a lot of it decline. You would say so? I, I think it's really... I was like, a, I'm, I'm a big fan of druid, because I hate Are it. Are you? Okay. Yeah. And, um, I kind of think it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's falling off. From yeah, for now. It is, it, yeah. Especially with the zoo, and, uh, face hunter, and, um... It's getting punished by the meta and, really and hard. By right? <laughs> Crazy. But I just want to see what Blackwing, like the entire BRM will do for it because um, I, I don't know that anything else that's coming up is going to help the anathemas of Druid as much as it will help Druid. Like the whole anathemas. dragon setup wow, man. will probably help Druid a bit more. Yeah, dude, I, I came up with, I used anathema in a like, casual conversation. Wow, I have to buy myself a vocabulary book yeah lexicon right <laughs> Carlos. a lexicon yeah lexicon yeah i was yeah you can say that that i have to buy that because i was searching for the word for that book so yeah, yeah maybe we need a lexicon yeah or is it a lexus Lex no, lexus is a car a right? <laughs> <laughs> i'm not even sure i have no idea all right yeah well okay druid wow yeah. he uses the Worst card of Druid ever. No, I like it. Against Priest, it's amazing. Because you do it a 5-2? Yeah. Yeah, you make it as a 5-2 early and the Priest can't handle it. Oh man, that's a great Innervate Emperor, actually. Whoa. Wow. A 2-mana 5-2. Wow. No, no, no. Not, not the Druid <laughs> Flame. <laughs> yeah, 2-mana 5-2. Do you know how sick that is? I think Magma Rager has now been made obsolete. A hundred percent. And it's even a beast. Can you believe that? No I mean, it's way. weak to Hemet, so maybe it's not that good, but... Um, the you know, you have to degree. consider Hemet Ness and Wary. You have to. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I always consider it. When I build a deck, I'm always like, well, how would Hemet affect this card? You know how I build my decks? I always put... I, I, I pick a class, and then I think, okay, what are the other nine, uh, 29 cards besides Hemet? Yeah, that's exactly what I do. After I add the 29 cards, I just cut the hammer because it doesn't fit. Yeah, and then I put in Dr. Balanced. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. is that what you do too? Yeah, that's exactly right, cool. my style, you know? Yeah, I, I like your style, Lothar. We can uh, we can get along. Alright, so a lot of really nice plays here. You drew three cards out of that Wild Pyro with Circle of Healing. That's not the more. Let's talk over. more about Hemingway. Yeah. Well, if Hemet was here, he wouldn't be able to kill Emperor Thorson, that's for sure. Wow, well, that's a really crazy turn. Yeah, really good turn for Gara, to be honest. And Dark Coldness, the card that's phased out. 
Yeah, most people are telling, um, talking that um, priest matchup against druid is really great for priest, and most of the time I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Druid crushes priest, but now we can see when a priest player can draw three cards at turn three. Oh, it's the headlock right? syndrome, right? When you when you draw enough cards, you're just golden, right? Um, yeah. As a priest, if, if the warlock lets you draw cards, you're going to be able to find your Shadow Ward deaths. You're going to be able to find your answers, possibly even the Shrinkmeister plays sometimes that have been seen with Cabal. Um, so then you're able to get something done, but you really need to have a really generous warlock letting you draw into your cards, which in this case, Frezar couldn't do much to prevent it. The Circle of Healing and Northshire and Wildpire was the god draw for Gara. True. So what do you do here? Play Druid of the Cloud in Taunt mode? I'd consider Lotha, but maybe it's a bit mm. dull. Well... Turn 4 for Gara. What can he do at turn 4? Well, we know what he can do, but what is Furzer thinking? Now, I would say the Taunt is the best option here. Well, it seems like he agrees with you at the very least. Maybe that's yeah. bad. Maybe that's why he has 1-5. Because he agrees with me. Yeah, maybe he shouldn't agree with you. Fresar, yeah. I should have played Lothab. Then again, what does Lothab accomplish, right? Like, I suggested Nothing. that because it's kind of the play and forget where you're guaranteed to get a good follow-up. It's just yeah, that I wonder what you might have been expecting on turn 4. Because usually priests don't have much to play there. And you don't, you don't play spells on turn 4. Like yeah, not priest. with Lothab coming down, for sure. No, 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 even without Lothab. Yeah, like, there's... What's what the really spell? Like... Fault Steel? Power Shield. That's it. Right. That's what you do, and uh, if you play Lotep, one thing you can, like, the best turn for Lotep, I think, against Priest is 10-7, um, so he will not have enough mana to use power of death. Well, Frezar here is just passing. I mean, Gara passing, giving his opponent the ability to be proactive, which is exactly what a Druid wants to do. Um, I'm curious to see how this is going to go. I would say it's Lotep Red. Yeah, that seems like... And you know what I love about Emperor oh, Thorson? And what about the 5-2 into Lotep into killing into the Pyromancer? Pyromancer, yeah. That's that's definitely a good consideration. You've got to be afraid of what that point. Because you know Nothing. that, you that might be... Nothing, you would Lotep Nova doesn't hit, so... Yeah, if you Lotep, yeah. Then you're not... Not, not a... Pre Wait! Oh. Well, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's also um, okay. I wouldn't say that's okay. But he really needed the card draw. Do you kill the Northshire Cleric? I think so. Yeah, I'm getting more worried about the Northshire Cleric than about anything else at the moment. Like, he's got enough card advantage on you. Sure, you're getting an Ancient of Lore, but the Priest, if he can just keep powering on cards, he will eventually out-control you. And down comes the 5-2. Alright, good luck with that whole Wow, year. he really did that. Yeah, he did. I was like, what? That's so Magma weak Lion, to... boys. That's uh, look at this. This is so weak to Holy Nova. It is, but then again, maybe he knows Gar doesn't run it. I haven't seen any. I so don't know if you Rezar play has that him. to kill the Belcher. That's so weak too. Yeah, you're getting half a card. Not even actually. Now <laughs> it's gotten even worse. That oh. was Well, you play the Ancient of Lore, and that's it. Yeah, I think so. You could play it you, to you heal need... your. Uh, you need the card draw. Without the card draw, you're basically shooting blanks. Yeah, it's bu it's bust. So you play lore and pass the turn, I would say. Man, this is so weak to that light light bomb. This is gonna be so disgusting. Hilarious. Oh man, that light bomb is gonna do nothing for for Frezar. Like he's gonna lose all his board, and Gar's gonna be like, whatever. I tickled my sludge belcher for three. Oh, uh, Frezar is about to kill that Belcher, maybe. You seem like you said the, uh, you started the word and be always like, what? <laughs> Alright, so Frezar is sacrificing everything to the Belcher, expecting the light bomb, which was a great play. It's a huge investment, but it's ultimately gonna work out in this specific case. Because that light bomb would have punished him way too hard. Yeah, but it doesn't look good for him either. That's not optimal, but I'd say it's far from over at this point. We're still in the formative stages of the Druid's ability to burst. Like, all it takes for the Druid is one good board, right? Mm. Yeah. 
And that circle's been used on a non-wipe. Well... That's not a bad turn for Frezar. Lotha, Pilot of Shredder, perhaps? I think that's the best. The Except... light bomb doesn't hit, and you, can, you, you, you might be able to get yourself an and... amazing Savage Roar, right? Yeah, Just and the Lotha is, as I said before, 10-7 for Priest is the best low tip situation, I would say. You deny him ev Oh, as I said. Every card, including the Shadow Work Death, yeah. and there it is. Exactly. And Fault Steel, too. Yeah. So, oh. I think that's great. And out comes a Nerubian Egg. Not exactly what oh. Sr Meta wants to see, because it feeds into the Cabal Shadow Priest. Yeah. Just one less minion for the Savage Roar. Okay, we can skip to the next match, I would say. Oh, wait! Uh -oh. Never mind. Change of plans, <laughs> perhaps. So now you have to push for damage. Yeah, Every definitely. Turn. Unless you're still afraid of the light bomb, right? Which is still a meaningful you, problem. How can you win this game if you don't push for face? Yeah, with that hand, you can do five damage to the face. Next in combo, and then combo Next again. Next in combo, like second nature. <laughs> yeah. yeah, easy. Or life. innovate for double savage draw. Yeah. Just another druid day. Hashtag druid things. I love Dragon Egg, man. I'm so happy that Garus put it in his priest. I made a deck called uh, Here Comes the Hatchery, which had Nerubian Eggs and Dragon Eggs in it as a priest deck. The Nerubian Eggs haven't been doing too well, but the Dragon Eggs have been MVP. For Gara? Not really. He didn't use it yet. Yeah, unfortunately. I wonder if he runs wow, any... Because chosen your egg. That's bouncy. Yeah. That, that, it's really easy to enable the egg in Priest. I'm telling you, it's really easier than you think. Because you can heal it up once it's been buffed up. It really counters Knife Jugglers amazingly well. Which is a big consideration when you're facing off against a lot of the hyper aggro stuff. Well, Wild Growth's not what Frezar wants to see, but... Oh man, can you can you believe this? He's in a such awkward position. He can't kill the injured blade master. Yeah, that's weak. Yeah. Do you have to just savage? Oh, him? that's so bad. Yeah. I, I guess it's not that bad though. Cause it does let the Drake live unless Gara goes for Valence Chosen, Shadow or Death. <laughs> Which would be hilarious. Imagine Valence Chosen on yeah, Valence Chosen on the egg, then Akinai Ping. Is that yeah, enough? Yeah, he's got yeah, enough yeah, mana. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the best. What a crazy play. Not so crazy, but two six oh. eggs. Wow. Goodbye, Drake. Now you lack the second savage or how can you win? Oh, maybe that will help. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Balance to the rescue. You called? Well, let's see what Frezar picks up, though. Because, I mean, Force of Energy Savage Roar as a one of is pretty sweet, but the second roar, I think, was a really big deal for him. It might, in fact, so. have been the most important card for him to keep. But then again, the, Dru the Priest can't heal at the moment, as long as the Akinai is up. I don't think that's a problem. Now you just saw the first Savage Roar. You know the, basically, you, you know the damage output. You're not fearing the super, super double Savage Roar. Yeah, but aren't you afraid of, like, swipe to the face, and then, and then like, a little bit of damage here and there can really amount to an insta-kill. Well, you have a Belcher. What do you care? Right. Yeah, Keeper of the Skill wouldn't be enough to deal with that. 10 10, look at this. Belcher, Death, Heal. Heal, yeah. There's Well, not Heal, but Ping, rather. Yeah, yeah, it... yeah. But you, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And it will hit the egg. You will see. A swipe! Wow, okay. Sweeperino. That, that's a pretty productive card. But you still kill the egg with your egg. I mean, you, you kill the bot with your egg, right? I mean, it's gonna have to depend. Yeah, he's got spell damage on the egg, so he can get himself even more damage. Oh, yeah, out right. I'm always forgetting about the spell power. Like, the same happened to Ignite during Sitsuri Cup. Yeah, don't blame him. A lot of people forget about it. It's oh. basically just a bit of a bonus, and this is perfect for Gara. Yeah, this is the best. Wow. Good luck, Frezar. He would be in the range of double Savage Roar combo now. <laughs> well, Frezar does find a Belcher, though. But there's a Keeper of the Grove in Gara's hand, thanks to that Thought Steal. Uh, it have to be a defensive clear with Force of Nature. That can't feel good. Nah. 
You just belch your keeper? Oh man, oh. What, what a horrible... Oh, wow. Oh. Well, we know that that won't work. Th this game is... <laughs> I actually, wait, does Fresno have any more big bombs? We've seen Scenarius and Dr. Balance, so what's left? We've also seen Lothab. What's left in that deck? Mm, second Droid of the Claw. And okay. uh, Sylvanas, I would say. And... Um... It's all about... I, I don't know. I mean, it feels... Oh, well, we'll know. Maybe if he does play Thought Steel. He probably no, won't, he, though. No, no, no. He's just playing for board control now. There's a second ref, so he will heal the injured Blade Master. He's got a bit of burst too, with Akanai Ping plus Keeper of the Grove for two. That's not too bad. Frezar finding a swipe, but that's way too little. I think Frezar is considering whether or not he needs to clear with swipe one of the minions and possibly the keeper for the silence, but it oh, won't matter man. in this case. Yeah, that's so over. Like, Gara really did value. well in this game. There's like really no way for Frezar to come back from this. That start was amazing with a triple well, draw. That was crazy. Yeah. Lifarinho with Keeper, Alkanai, Peng. Unless he will kill one creature now. I mean, Frezar will kill one creature. Wait, what? Uh, okay, he's setting yeah, up a clear of some sort. But that's going to be lethal with Keeper of the Grove silencing off the Sludge Belcher going full face with the Akinai Ping at the very end. Exactly the scenario we highlighted a few moments ago. So that's going to be game number two. Gar is going to equalize the score one to one. So that Priest has locked out and Frezar is going to be able to replay his Druid. Oh man, Gar is so matchup. excited. I'm sure he is. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, he looks really excited for this. True. Alright, so. well, that's not too bad. That was, a, that was a good game, honestly, for, for Gar there. I think uh, his lines of play were pretty good. That early draw w really paid off uh, in the mid-game when it, g it gave him more options. And that I think Frazar played well, though, when he played around the Light Bomb. It's just that Jure the Flame was such a weak card in general. Yeah, but it's like, a it did weak nothing. card in general in the every single one. Druid. Yeah, it's like a weak card. In the game orange design. one, but he said he didn't like the card very much after he was done with the... Uh, well, we the were event asking him, like, like yeah. isn't just Shade of Nexmas just playing better? And he was like, yeah, it yeah, seems it is. like so. <laughs> that, that's pretty much it, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't really doubt it. Like, it's a card that everybody wants to experiment with because it shows promise on paper. You want to see maybe if there's an, a hidden gem in it. But so far, nobody's really been nope. able to make it shine um, at the we moment. So Gara is going to be... through it is for the fight. We're going to get another game. It's going to be Gara's Hunter versus Frezar's Warlock. So Frezar is not going to be replaying Druid. Not with um, a mage and a hunter left in Gara's lineup. And that, that would be way too painful. If Gara is playing Face Hunter, and I would say he is, uh, then whatever Warlock it is, unless Demon Lock with um, Mistress of Pain, then I would say it's a really favorite match for Gara. Yeah. Oh, we'll have to see exactly what happens. I'm really curious to see what Frezar brought for Warlock. There's so many archetypes now. Zoo's back uh, in, you know, in the mix, which I think is really interesting. Now we're seeing Handlock, we're seeing mid-range Demon Locker, all sorts of mid-range Warlocks, and, and we're also zoo. seeing Zoo on top of it because Imp Gang yeah. Boss brought back the archetype. Yeah, okay, that, this is the pure Zoo with um, double Sea Giant and Hobgoblins. Probably not. I, I can dream. Ho what? No, man. <laughs> Hobgo Hobgoblin with Echoing Ooze and Neutrons is actually fairly effective. And Gara is keeping the Unleashed Hounds, but other than that, his hand sucks. Yeah, there's no way he's going to be able to put pressure here. Not with this hand. Oh, oh wow. wow, and Frezar finds a double flame imp opener. Why would you play double flame imp in the current metagame? Because you deal six damage to yourself faster, so you can this move is... on to the next game. Like, this is... Oh, I'll just play Fireball in my face. Yeah. Mate, that's brilliant. But then you play two fireballs in your opponent's face, right? It kinda, but... Yeah. Isn't that how it works? But Hunter doesn't care for, like, you know, first five turns. Right. I think Hunter would sack oh, flame if he could. Wow. What a whiff here for Gara. He, he will... I would just play the owl. As a body? 
I mean, you're yeah, weakening the R, the, uh, you, the you, void, you, but that's about it. No, no, no. You, um, you silence the taunt. That's that's yeah. the, that's the thing because maybe you will want to play the Unleash the Hounds on turn three. Maybe who knows? You know, right? Yeah, I mean, Gara's gonna have to do something about this board though, because if Frezar gets any more board presence, it's soon going to escalate into a sea giant. And you know, there might be a turn four defender of Argus. Like you have, you have to get that in your mind. Leper no. Okay, that's kind of too late, I would say. Well, he does. He's probably just gonna play it very defensively and try to burst the face. As soon as he can silence the Voidwalker, he's gonna go for it and then just unleash. How is that defensive? <laughs> he will just... No, but like he won't go. He won't play defensively. That's what I'm saying. He's oh, just okay. gonna go Sorry. all face, not defensive. Misunderstood. There's no reason for him, I think, at this point to try to play the defense game because he's gonna lose it unless he finds explosive trap, which is the only real hope uh, that he's and got. It doesn't really the board. do much because we know there's a lurking defensive Valgus. Oh, Gara goes for the defensive play and kills the Voidwalker with a three drop. That seems like a valuable <gasps> outcome for Frezar. Second defender. So. Tapping and playing Flam M. What a wow. lot of damage, yeah. That's like, wow. Yeah, that's what we call a suicide lock, right? The archetype, where you play soul fires on your own face. And Mol pit lords. Molten giants so would be great here. <laughs> yep. So Garo has to play... <gasps> Can he wait one turn? And I think he will. Yeah, I definitely think he will, but I think he has to go full face at this point. And he does! Three damage from the kill wow, command, not even waiting for the beast. That's He's so heads up! Yeah, that's yeah. nice. That's nice. Oh man, look at those flame imps. Those flame imps are crazy! Wow, he needed exactly those flame imps here. Yeah, but would not you taunt the oozes? I just don't know what Gaara's supposed to do though in this position. I mean, lucky juggles, I would say. Very lucky juggles, but still, it's possible that he's able to clear up those flame imps if the juggler just does what it has to. Oh, he's gonna go for the kill command play and the haunted creeper. Actually, Iron Beak Yowl try to go through as many taunt lines as he can, but there's another one in Frezar's hand. That is not what he's gonna want to see. Gaara's gonna see that defend of Argus and lose hope. Oh, and Frezar goes for this sorry BM. DBM is real. Oh man. Frezar gonna is is reaching for that second win. That is a crazy <laughs> draw there for Frezar. <laughs> wow. But Gara's draw was absolutely horrendous. We have to at least be honest on yep. that specific front. Uh, everything yep. was wrong about that. Yep. yep, 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 yep. Wait, but if he kills the 3-4 and the 4-3. He, he can't. He doesn't die, right? Oh, but that—that's nothing. Though those those hits do nothing oh. to help. Wow, those jugglers. He's gonna be able to kill the two minions that he needs to, but how does he even kill his opponent after that? Well, let's see. Frezar finds Surge a lethal. And dire wolf, yeah, dire wolf. Dire wolf is lethal. Yeah, indeed it is. That's gonna be game two. Frezar is gonna be taking it over Gara. I, He's left yeah. with his, um, wait, what, with his druid. Yeah, Frezar's got his druid left against Hunter, Hunter and Mage. Mage. I wouldn't say that's easy. It's going to be a pretty when... tough matchup for druid, I think. Well, you have the, what's the name of the card? The new one? <laughs> the three to five? The Virgin of the Flame, right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <this is> a... <laughs> You're like, I don't remember the name of this card. And I don't think it's very good. It's like the Trogs, right? Nobody remembers their name. Yeah. It might be useful against Hunter, though. Like, this is one of the matchups when, yeah. can ma when it can matter, might matter. It is the only matchup where people, I think, play... I mean, Drew to the Flame is pretty okay against Zoo and Hunter. Those are, like, the two places where it shines, sort of, right? It's... Uh, a slightly worse zombie chow in those matchups, many like very often. But at least oh, it's early just, game that contests the board. So we'll just play zombie chow and next, right? Yeah. <laughs> Usually, right? That's pretty much what you do. I mean, I don't. Drew the flame seems like it's better because it's compensated for by the versatility of making a five-two. But the times where you really want to make a five-two, you know, there's so few and far between that ultimately it might as well just not be a thing. Yep. Well, Alright, well, moving on to the next game. Yep. Druid versus Hunter. 
I'm saying so too much yep today. Yep. Yep. All right. Oh, now that's a decent start. But Fraser has a decent start himself. I would ditch the wild growth though. B both players have an amazing no, start. Wait, wait. No, I wouldn't. I keep everything here, honestly. Yeah, yeah. You can play Tin Wonder of the Flame into Tin 2 Rap or Wild Grove, depending on what's happening in the game. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Although Gara does have an amazing hand as well, to be honest. It's as good as it can get. But the Druid of the Flame is relevant. Oh wow. wow. Did he just did wow. he just pick up a perfect turn one against Hunter? What's happening? That's like this is the craziest value. start. You just play both, right? I think so, yeah. You just you go full out zombie chow coin innervate due to the flame as a two five. Why would you and... wait? There's no uh, reason to wait with, with that. You just go crazy. Yeah. I don't think there's any reason for Frezar to wait for this. Although he might be considering the later game options, the mid game, you know, where no. he might want to cast five drops, but I don't no. think you can afford that because the early game is what matters most against the Hunter deck. He can play it five too. <laughs> yeah, go, great play against Leopardinch. <laughs> oh, don't say Leopardinch. Why? He doesn't look like Nimsh. No, but would you like to look like Leopardinch? I don't know, Nimsh calls it Leper Nimsh. Yeah, I know. Because he says like his favorite card. <laughs> Alright, well there's a uh, Glazer. Suka's not bad. Yeah, it kills one minion. I don't want to be a party pooper, but that's a great start from Fezar, and he's even got the Wrath on the back end. I think it's game, to be honest. I know I might be too fast with that, but it looks really bad. I would say. Oh, well, that's pretty. Growth. He's gonna have a free turn of wild growth. That's as good as it's gonna get for him. There's really no other time he's gonna be able to do so with that commanding mm. start. I think it's a really good option. You go to the 50 50? I, I think you do. You hope for it. Oh, and he misses. This is awful. And the swipe is found. Well, that's going to handle the board quite nicely. And he keeps a zombie chow. Just for good measure. And Gara's like, yes, yep, nice yes, job. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you, Druid. Yep, yep. Skill stone. Oh. Oh, well. Kill command of the zombie, Chow. You want to talk about value? Frezar here calling the well played. I don't know if that's... Oh, and he finds the curve. Art, you can't be serious. This is, this is not real. <laughs> Just... I, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself... I, I think you just concede, right? Escape concede looks like a good play, but you've got a, you know, a, a quick <laughs> shot. <laughs> I can go and tin 5, so Druid has 7, then, seven mana. Yeah, it's for Dr. Balance to come in on curve. Or look, look, at, look at that top deck. Look, look at that right now. Oh, that's, Actually, yes, uh, that's that's hilarious. <laughs> 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 he wild grows, he emperors, and he s this is not real. He gets Arcane Golem, wild growth, and emperor. Oh, I did, that's one of the first times I see he got so salty. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, he, he can't believe it. Uh, he's look at this. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing alongside you, Gara. This is unmöglich. And he doesn't curve, right? He doesn't curve, of course. He finds a 3-drop three, three on the back of yeah. this. And yeah. this uh, scenario on turn 8 is going to come down to seal the board away from Gara, who will not believe his eyes. This is just the craziest outcome. Just goes for the concede. <laughs> Doesn't want to hassle himself with this outcome. Frezar goes 3-1 up against Gara. Um, that last game was extraordinarily fast, um, even for a Hunter game, to be honest. Wow, that is... That was fast. I don't even know what to say, Lothar. That was fast, you can say that. Yeah, Frezar gets the win against Gar though, so Gar is going to be 3-4 in the league and Frezar is going up 2-5. to five. That probably will not be enough to get him back in the top 5, but Gar gets knocked down to 7th or 8th place, I believe, as a result of this loss. So we'll have to see how the rest of the matches pan out. We will not be having a break between this match and the next one. The next match oh, really? is going to be between Orange and Reynad. Uh, both players are currently at 4 losses, Orange with 1 win and Reynad with 2. 
Um, so we'll be moving on to that game very quickly because the first match was very fast uh, as a result of the way the games panned out. All right, so you know I'm not funny? sure what Reyna is, if Reyna is going to bring anything new. You know what's funny? That game was so fast that on stream with the delay. Yeah. We're it's not even just, there yet? Yeah, we are, <laughs> we are at the start of game Yeah, three. game two? Okay. Game three. Like, yeah, what? it was a really quick game. It's 10-2. It's... <laughs> wow, that was crazy. His yep. decks were crazy. Yeah, and I think the start, like that innervates, the zombie child plus rid of the flame into wild growth. Um, was just insane. Like, how can you recover from that? If the juggler had hit the zombie chow, then maybe, maybe things maybe. would have been, actually, They would have been different, probably. Probably um, not. But that was just, you know, the worst possible scenario for... for, um... for Gara. So, we're gonna be moving on to the next...